In this video, I'll work through some sample problems involving finding maximum and minimum values of multivariable functions. For these first couple of examples, we're just going to focus on finding the critical points of the function, and then later on we'll worry about trying to test them to see if we actually have maximum or minimum values. So a critical point is a place where the gradient of my function equals the zero vector. In other words, where the x partial derivative equals zero and where the y partial derivative equals zero. So we take our partial derivatives, f sub x in this case is 2x minus 6, f sub y is 2y minus 8, and then we just set them both equal to 0. And sometimes the equations are relatively easy to solve, like they are in this example. I solve this first equation for x, I get 2x equals 6, and that means x equals 3. Solving the second equation gives me 2x equals 8, sorry, 2y equals 8, and that's going to give me y equals 4. So my critical point here, I only have one, and the critical point is the point 3, comma 4. And that's it. Here we have another similar example. Again, we're looking for critical points, so we're going to figure out the partial derivative f sub x, the partial derivative f sub y, and set them both equal to 0. So in this case, f sub x is 2x, the derivative of xy is y, the derivative of 2x is 2, and the derivative of y is 0, the derivative of 1 is 0. So that's my x partial derivative. My y partial derivative is going to be x, minus 1. So when we look at this, we've got two equations that are a little bit more complicated than the ones that we saw in our previous example. But what we're trying to do is figure out how can we solve one of these equations for one of our variables. And we want to try to pick the easier route. Any of these equations could be solved for any of the variables, but by far the easiest equation to solve here is this equation here, because all we have to do to solve that for x is add 1 to both sides. So we get x equals 1. And now we can take that x equals 1 and plug it into our other equation. So now we have 2 times 1 plus y minus 2 equals 0, and that tells us that y equals 0. So our critical point is x equals 1, y equals 0, in other words, 1 comma 0. All right, so now we're going to get into trying to actually find maximum minimum values. So what we need to do is first do exactly what we've already been doing, which is to find the critical points. So just like before, we're going to take f sub x, we're going to take f sub y, and we're going to set them both equal to 0. In this case, f sub x is 2x minus 6y, and f sub y is going to be negative 6x plus 2y plus 4. And again, we want to set them both equal to 0. So again, our strategy at this point is going to be to, to solve one of these equations for one of our variables. And we want to try to do this in the easiest possible way. There's not always one easiest way to do it, but in this case, probably the easiest method would be to solve this first equation for x. We add 6y to both sides, we divide both sides by 2, we get that x equals 3y. And again, we're going to take that solution and plug it into our other equation. So negative 6x becomes negative 6 times 3y plus 2y plus 4 equals 0. We get negative 18y plus 2y plus 4 equals 0. That means negative 16y equals negative 4, so y equals 1 4. Now that we know what y is, we can go back to our original equation for x. We get 3 times 1 fourth, also known as 3 fourths. So our critical point is going to be 3 fourths comma 1 fourth. But that's not all they're asking us to do. Now we've got to actually test this critical value. So to test the critical value, we have to compute this quantity that we call d. So d is fxx times fyy minus fxy squared. So we need to figure out our second order partial derivatives. So fxx is the x partial derivative of the x partial derivative, which is going to be 2. fyy is going to be the y partial of the y partial, that's also 2. And fxy is going to be either the x partial derivative of the y partial derivative, or equivalently, the y partial derivative of the x partial derivative. Either way, we get negative 6. So my d is going to be 2 times 2 minus negative 6 squared. So that's 4 minus 36. That's negative 32. And that's negative. And when we look at the different possibilities for our second derivative test, remember that this d, the d stands for determinant, it's going to determine whether or not we have a max or a min. Because d turned out to be negative, that means we don't have a max or a min, what we have here as a saddle point. So a saddle point at the point 3 fourths comma 1 fourth. That's our final conclusion for this problem. All right, another problem, same idea, same process. So we start by finding f sub x and f sub y. 
In this case, f sub x is going to be x squared plus 3x. And f sub y, sorry, that's f sub x is x squared plus 3y. Sorry about that. And then f sub y is going to be negative y squared plus 3x. And again, we're going to set those both equal to 0. So again, the idea is pick an equation, pick a variable, solve that equation for that variable. Now, we've got some squares here. So if you're ever tempted at this point to maybe solve uh, for something that requires you to take a square root, you want to try to avoid that if you can, right? We don't want to try to take roots because, again, think about the next step after that. You're going to have to take that strange square root and plug it into the other equation and then try to solve, and it's just going to be a mess. So if you can get this to happen without taking any roots, you're going to be much better off. So I'm going to solve this second equation for x. I get 3x equals y squared, so x equals y squared over 3. Plug that into my other equation. That's going to give me y squared over 3 squared plus 3y equals 0. That's y to the fourth divided by 9 plus 3y equals 0. Let me multiply both sides of that equation by 9. That gives me y to the fourth plus 27y equals 0. I can factor that, factor out a y. That gives me either y equals 0 or y cubed plus 27 equals 0. That'd be y cubed equals negative 27. y equals the cube root of negative 27, which is negative 3. So we get two possibilities. We get either y equals 0 or y equals negative 3. So using my x formula, if y equals 0, my x is going to be 0 squared over 3, which is 0. And if x if y equals negative 3, then x will equal negative 3 squared divided by 3, which is going to be positive 3. So I get two critical points this time. I get 0 comma 0, and I get the point 3 comma negative 3. x is 3, y is negative 3. So now I've got to test both of those critical points. Okay, so to test these critical points, we've got to know the quantity d, which requires us to know our second order partial derivatives. So fxx is going to be 2x fyy is going to be negative 2y, and then fxy is going to be 3. So we've got two critical points at 0, 0. That was one of our critical points. The d value is going to be fxx, which is going to be 2 times 0, times fyy, which is going to be negative 2 times 0, minus fxy squared. That's going to work out to be negative 9. That's negative, so that means we have a saddle point. Our other critical point was 3 comma negative 3. At that point, the value of d is 2x, so that's 2 times 3. fyy is negative 2 times y, so that's negative 2 times negative 3, minus 3 squared. That's going to be 6 times 6, minus 9. 6 times 6 is 36. 36 minus 9 is 27. 27 is positive. When we look at the second derivative test, it says if d is positive, we have to look at fxx. In this case, fxx was this quantity. That was 6, which is also positive. And if we look at our second derivative test, that tells us that we have a local minimum here at the point 3, comma, negative 3. All right, one last example. So again, the process is the same. We're just going through several examples so we can see some of the different ways that the algebra can work out. In this case, we've got f sub x requires the product rule. So we've got two expressions multiplied together. I'll group my parentheses like this. They both have x's in them, which means they're both functions involving x, so we have to use the product rule. So it's the derivative of the first function, which is y, times the second function, e to the negative x minus 2, 1, plus the first function, times the derivative of the second function. The derivative of e to the u is e to the u, multiplied by the derivative of u, which in this case is negative 1. And then f sub y is similar. It's the derivative of the first function times the second function plus the first function times the derivative of the second function. The derivative of e to the u is e to the u times the derivative of u, using the chain rule there. OK, so now we've got to set these both equal to 0 and solve. Now in this case, the method that we were talking about before of pick a variable, solve the equation for that variable, and then go to the other equation, it's really not going to work here. We're not going to be able to solve these equations for just one variable because of those exponential terms. 
We've got lots of different X's and Y's in lots of different places. It's just not going to be easy to do. So what we can do instead, and this is another algebraic method that sometimes helps out, is we can factor this equation. Notice that we've got this exponential term, e to the minus x minus 2y, in both of our terms. And when we factor that out, we get y minus xy equals 0. And here, again, we can factor out e to the minus x minus 2y. And then we factor that out, we get x minus 2xy equals 0. And now the reason why that helps is because when we know we have a factored expression equals 0, this means either e to the minus x minus 2y equals 0 or y minus xy equals 0. Similarly here, we know either e to the minus x minus 2y equals 0 or x minus 2xy equals 0. And that's what we're going to be able to work with. First things first, before I go on to the next slide, an exponential expression can't be zero. We can never get zero when we raise something to a power. When we raise something that's not zero, and e is 2.7 something, so e is definitely not zero. There's no way we can raise e to a power and get a result of zero. So this equation here does not yield any roots. This equation here does not yield any roots. So the system that we're really boiling down to is y minus xy equals zero and x minus 2xy equals zero. And we'll work to try to solve that on the next slide. Okay, so we've simplified our equations, but we still need to try to find our solution. And again, the key here is going to be to factor. We can factor a y out of y minus xy. So we get y times 1 minus x equals 0. And that means that one of those two factors has to equal 0. Either y equals 0 or 1 minus x equals 0, which would tell us that x would equal 1. So you really kind of have two cases here. In case 1, what we have is y equals 0. In case 2, what we have is x equals 1. If y equals 0, we plug that into the second equation, we get x minus 2x times 0 equals 0, which would tell us that x equals 0. x equals 0, y equals 0, that gives us the point 0 comma 0. x equals 1, well that would tell us that 1 minus 2 times 1 times y equals 0. That's 1 minus 2y equals 0, which would tell us that y equals 1 half. So we get 1 half, sorry, 1 comma 1 half, x equals 1, y equals 1 half, gives us our critical point that we also have to test. Okay, so now that we found our critical points, now we have to test them. So we need to figure out fxx, we need to figure out fyy, and we need to figure out fxy. And then both of those, we've got to plug in our critical points and see what we get. Okay, so we've got fx up here from before. So when we take our der partial derivative with respect to x, again, we're gonna need the product rule. So it's the first function, sorry, it's the derivative of the first function, which is gonna be e to the minus x, minus 2y times negative 1, that's the derivative of that first function, times the second function, times y minus xy, and then plus the first function, e to the minus x minus 2y, times the derivative of the second function, which is going to be minus y. Derivative of y is 0, derivative of minus xy with respect to x is minus y. Now we don't have to simplify that, we don't have to set it equal to 0, we don't have to factor it, all we're going to be doing is plugging into that. So our, our job for the rest of this is going to be uh, a little bit easier. Then fyy, very similarly, we're going to take the derivative of the first function, e to the minus x minus 2y times minus 2, multiplied by the second function, x minus 2xy, plus the first function, e to the minus x minus 2y, times the derivative of the second function. Again, we're taking the derivative with respect to x, so we get negative 2x there. And then finally, fxy. Again, we can either take the y derivative of the x derivative or the x derivative of the y derivative. Either way, we should get the same thing. I'm going to take the y derivative of the x derivative. So it's the derivative of the first function times negative 2 times the second function, y minus xy, plus the first function, e to the minus x minus 2y, multiplied by the derivative of the second function. This time, that's going to be 1 minus x. Derivative of y is 1. The derivative of xy with respect to y is minus x. So now we've got to plug in our uh, critical points into the d. So d is fxx times fyy minus fxy squared. So I'm going to save some of the arithmetic here for you, but when we get at 0, 0, what we're going to find is that the d value fxx is 0, fyy is 0, and fxy works out to be 1. 
So that's negative one, that's negative, so we get a saddle point. Things don't work out quite as nicely at the critical point one comma one half, but the fxx turns out to be negative one half e to the minus two. Fyy turns out to be negative two e to the minus two. And the fyy, sorry, fxy turns out to be zero. Now, when we look at this, we could figure out exactly what number that is, but all we really need to know is whether d is positive or negative. So notice that this is a negative number multiplied by a negative number, and then we're subtracting zero. Negative times a negative is a positive, so at this point, d is positive. And the fxx was negative, so we get a local max. Try to squeeze that in the corner there. So that's our result here. It's quite a long problem, um, but again, step by step, breaking it down, using this factoring trick um, to be able to set, uh, simplify things and get things set equal to zero can really help you there.